it's James Lindsay. Welcome to another episode of New Discourses Bullets, where I give a short kind of bullet point summary of one topic from woke Marxism I think you need to understand so that we can fight it and defeat it. And I actually want to give you an anti-DEI strategy, or actually a few of them today. So a lot of you are, it's a, I know it's a little old news, but a lot of you have been subjected to and are still subjected to DEI trainings at work. Diversity, equity, and inclusion. That's your DEI or unconscious bias training, or it's going to be sustainability or ESG, environmental social governance training, or sustainability training. Uh, so maybe I said sustainability twice. You're going to go through ideological training at any rate. Maybe it's DEI, maybe it's sustainability, maybe it's unconscious bias, something of this kind. And so what can you do? What do you do when your workplace forces you to go through another sustainability seminar or a DEI strategy meeting or an equity training seminar or, you know, an inclusion? Inclusion is the word they're really locking onto lately. Diversity and equity, they're shying away from just a little bit while leaning into inclusion and inclusive excellence. That's one of their new little buzzwords that they've started throwing around uh, meeting. So you're going to go to one of these ideological BS meetings facilitated by HR and probably mandated by the by the top brass at your company or institution or whatever. What do you go to? What do you do? That's what this is about. And so the first thing I'm going to tell you is you need to prepare for the worst, which is that you might get fired if you do anything. Because I'm going to give you advice on how to fight. So before I do that, let me give you a little nuance. You might not want to fight. If you don't, I understand, but realize you're going to pay for your decision with a little bit of your soul. You're going to demoralize yourself. As Robert Lifton tells us in Thought Reform and the Psychology of Totalism, everybody forced to participate, whether they lived in Maoist China, often in prisons, they didn't have the opportunity not to participate. You may feel that you're similarly chained to your job. You may feel that you can't sacrifice or risk it even now, knowing what's kind of at stake, seeing it more clearly. That might be the case. If you do that, if you give in, he says nobody comes out untouched, unchanged by thought reform. And make no mistake, that's what any of this ideological training at your workplace or institution or whatever or school is. It is an attempt to transform you so that you will transform the workplace, so that it will transform the world. It is a point, it is an, it is an attempt to change who you are. And you will pay by going along with it with a piece of your soul. That said, there are not just personal contingent reasons like that you need your job, you have kids, it's too risky, blah, 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 that you might, you know, cave in and go along with it, sell a piece of your soul to keep your obviously bogus job. But life is complicated and messy. So these are real things. It may also be a matter of preventing entryism. You may understand that if you fight back, you might get fired and replaced by somebody who's hired under those standards, and therefore the entire institution lurches that way. My general thought is, if an institution is that hell-bent on it, you need to let it lurch right off the cliff, and you're doing a favor by getting out, quitting, um, taking the good fight, seeing what happens. I wouldn't actually advise quitting or resigning. It's bold and cute and all this, and you feel good about yourself. Better to make them fire you and find out with an attorney whether or not you have a wrongful termination suit that hits them for it. Better to make them do it to you. That said, there are reasons to resign instead, which is that you may retain enough of your integrity to be able to get another job, where if you go down in flames, you might not be able to do that. Now, the four strategies I'm going to suggest to you, at least three of them, and I think probably all four, because they are fighting back, and I want people to fight back, but I want you to fight back intelligently. If you fall into one of the nuanced categories I just covered, or if you have contingencies, I get it. But you should consider fighting back and make sure that make absolutely sure that it's not something that you should do before you decide to do something else. I think you should fight back. Not everybody can, just saying. Which if you're going to fight back, you should prepare for the worst, which is that you're probably going to get fired and you might get a bad wreck uh, and may not easily find another job, especially where you already live or whatever um, in the industry. You may end up with a black mark on your resume from this that will go in advance of you or follow you around. And that could be a problem. I know that in academic hiring, you're you're probably basically screwed. Uh, if, if, if you go down in flames in academia, you're probably not getting another academic job until uh, not woke academic jobs open up. And so it 
so it goes. These are the calculations you have to take. Um, so prepare for the worst, whatever that means, because that's probably what's going to happen. And now let me just urge you, though, to think through this. A few years ago, people were calling me regularly and saying, James, what do I do? I got to fight back. They're doing all this DEI, unconscious bias, blah, 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 my work. What do I do? And everybody was like, or here I am, I'm whistleblowing to you. Here's some stuff going on. Please don't use my name. I can't get fired. I can't lose my job. I can't fight back because I don't want to lose my job. Everybody was so scared of losing their job. And I said to them back then, 2020, it will get worse. I understand. I'm not telling you to go down in flames. I'm not telling you to get fired. I'm just telling you the longer that we go without fighting back, quitting, resigning, actually taking the fight to suing, whatever it happens to be, the harder it will get. And so right now you still may be in that situation. And I will just tell you that is still true. The longer this progresses, the harder it is to get out. That was true in Maoist China. That was true in Soviet Russia. That was true in the different Eastern Bloc countries. That was true in the Asian countries that were communist. That's true in the South American countries that, com- that go communist like Venezuela, now Colombia, maybe Chile now. The longer you wait, the harder it gets, the worse it gets to fight back. You must fight back. It only gets worse and you're going to wish you did later and it's going to be worse. How worse? Well, right now they don't have quite the full digital infrastructure to put a black mark on you that really follows you around and precedes you and locks you out of every industry. They can't social credit you completely yet. They already have the beginnings of a social credit system operating and you know they do and your fear about going down in flames tells you they do. You can't just go get another job. Your record is somehow weirdly the permanent record we used to joke about in schools. It'll go on your permanent record, sir. And so when there's an actual social credit system that's more developed and come out further out of this whole thing they're doing, it will be much harder. It'll be much riskier. There's less risk now than there will be later. And later there will be a higher perceived need to do it. The logic tells you you should do it now, or you should just sell your soul and realize that you've sold your soul and do the best you can with that because that's between you and God. And I wouldn't be proud of you, but it is what it is. So I'm going to give you four strategies if you're going to fight back. And these are highly, highly contextual, highly personal, highly temperamental. Some of them are not something everybody can do. You might not be able to do some of these. I think the first two, almost anybody will be able to do. The last two, most people will not be able to do. Let me just give you some blanket advice. Don't try to do one unless you're absolutely sure that you can pull it off to a pretty high degree. If you don't have the skill, don't overestimate your skill. Do not try to do one of the strategies that is outside of your temperament and your capacity. So the four strategies I'm going to give you are forthright resistance. That's number one. Number two, gray rock. That's actually a thing. It's got a, it's a, it's a real strategy in dealing with abusers, as it turns out. Third is spying or espionage or whistleblowing. Those are all interchangeable terms. And fourth is troll. Okay, so resist, gray rock, spy, or troll. Those are your four ways you can fight back. Which one you choose depends on you, your circumstances, what's happening. I will tell you that the gray rock approach is the least risky of these. Um, And it may have, in many regards, some of the highest turnaround. It has a very high invest, uh, return on investment. It's the easiest to do, although it's still temperamental. Resisting forthrightly might be easier for you. Spying and trolling are not easy. They are not for most people. You should not do them if you're most people. Um, but Gray Rock is actually the easiest one. Uh, and, and probably the safest one. And if you, if I knew nothing else about you and I could only give you one, I would tell you to consider it, uh, probably first. So what are they, what are they, what are these for forthright resistance? You very, very forthrightly say, I'm, it's time to go to diversity training. Everybody has to go. They tell you to admit that you're racist or something like this, or that you're transphobic or talk about your transphobic thoughts. And you say, I will not participate in this. I will not do this. This is manipulative. This is damaging. This is a violation of my civil rights and my individual rights. I will not participate in this. You can name it to the degree that you know it. You can name the dynamic. You can explain everything that you have to explain, whatever it happens to be. You can go into it as hardcore as you want. I don't recommend getting too wild with it, 
but it's fir- firmly stating and sticking to that, I will not participate in this and explaining at least a little bit of why. This is manipulative. This is an infringement of my rights. This is wrong. This is morally unacceptable. This is uh, absolutely unacceptable. And elaborate to the degree that you have to, and then refuse to participate, which might mean leaving and then having to hash out with your boss why you took your stand. And like I said, prepare for the worst. You're probably going to get fired. Um, Okay, so gray rock, that's resist. That's forthright resistance. It's not complicated, guys. It just takes, that's, I think at this point in my life, most likely to be what I would do. But I could see myself doing any of these four. Gray rock is actually a little bit passive aggressive. Or I don't know if it's, yeah, it is. It's a little bit passive aggressive. It's a passive aggressive form of forthright resistance. In fact, what it is is unforthright resistance. It's the same refusal to participate without announcing it, without explaining it. It's simply doing it. It's ref- sitting there er- or and refusing to participate. Okay. And so wh- why does it call, why is it called gray rock? It is actually a tactic for dealing with, like I said, abusive narcissists in particular for abusive relationships. If somebody's in an abusive relationship with you, um, you go gray rock on them. Ghosting, as the kids call it, where you just stop responding to somebody is in a sense a very extreme form of gray rock. So what gray rock is, is you present yourself like you're a boring gray rock. There's nothing there. There's nothing to grab onto. You're just a boring gray rock. And so what does this look like in practice? They ask you, say, to confess to ways that you've been racist. And you say, I'm not racist. And they say, you've never been racist. And you say, no. You see how short the answers are? You give as often as possible. Your answer should have the smallest number of syllables possible. If you could get it down to a single grunt, you're winning. Things like, no, I'm not, okay. These are the kinds of responses. I think that you have participated in racism, okay. It's very dead and passive aggressive. You have to do this deadpan straight face, calm. This is, there's a temperamental aspect to this. You have to be able to stay flat and calm. Don't you think you've participated in systems that have benefited some people over others? No, just flat, dead. You haven't participated in systems? No. If you have to elaborate, certainly not to my knowledge, but it's better to give nothing to grab onto, like what's to your knowledge. Maybe your knowledge is limited best to give nothing. Well, I think you have. Okay. And just force them. This is the one that will put the facilitator into the greatest bind. Where this will end, if you can keep it going, is eventually they're going to start to leverage so- the, the social environment against you. They will absolutely do that. Hey, group, can you guys think of any ways that he's participated in a society that's benefited white people to the expense of black people and other people will start to volunteer answers. They might then turn that back on you. Does any of that make sense to you? No. Gray rock. No. Well, I think it must make sense. Okay. Do you see how the strategy works? And you just continue to do this strategy. You give them nothing. Where that eventually goes is the facilitator will probably become bored with you If they can't manipulate you, if they have the kind of temperament that's probably what they have, which is passive aggressive instead of directly aggressive, they will start to ignore you. You can rest assured that HR is going to get a letter about you. You're going to be recommended to more trainings. You might end up in a meeting with your boss, at which point you need to be ready to articulate, I never said anything. I kind of didn't participate. I answered every question I was asked. I just said what I thought in a very plain way. Uh, and I was non-disruptive. I made no arguments. I didn't fight with anybody and that I thought what was happening was unreasonable. And I said so in the fewest words possible or whatever, so that I might remain non-disruptive to whatever else is going on, which I determined was not relevant to me and, and not part of my business. And you can hash it out with your boss as to whether or not they think you were being reasonable and refusing to admit to a crime that you didn't commit. Remember the point of thought reform in the Maoist prisons. If you've listened to the stuff I've done talking about that book or the Maoist prison environment and thought reform brainwashing, um, remember that the goal is to get people to confess to and to, in in the, the original wording, recognize 
the crimes against the ideology that they've committed. So if they say you're a racist, that means you've committed this cultural crime of racism and you are, you may not recognize it. It's maybe it's complicity in systems. It's not individual. It's not institutional, right? It's complicity in a system that benefits others inequitable, certain people inequitably and disadvantages others. You've participated in the system by default. So you're by default guilty, right? And so that's the logic is you're already guilty. And their goal is to get you to recognize your guilt. Gray Rock refuses to recognize the guilt. In the same way that forthright resistance does, Gray Rock refuses to recognize the guilt. You give away zero parts of your soul. Meanwhile, you don't actually take a stand. Forthright resistance, you take a stand. Gray Rock, you don't take a stand. You refuse to even take a stand. You just go completely true neutral, dead and useless to what they're doing. This will probably frustrate the facilitator to no end. They will accuse you of white fragility. And what do you say? No, or okay, depending on the way the accusation or question is framed. And you just continue this. This is the strategy that is the easiest to follow for the largest number of people. If you have a temper, you're probably not going to be able to follow gray rock. Gray rock, you may have to practice. Also, it's very inhuman. You have to be very disinterested. If you let your disinterest tip into what you're going to want it to, which is contempt, you're going to end up doing more forthright resistance or even just being angry and creating a problem for yourself. So make sure that you can actually do this before you do it. But gray rock is the strategy that most people can do most effectively, probably outright. And it's the least likely of the fighting back strategies I'm giving you to get you in trouble at the crucial moment. Now that said, you might also avoid trouble with spying, espionage, and whistleblowing. I've advised people to do this in the past. In this you are actually going to, in a sense, go along to get along. I would say that you would do so as minimally as possible because every time you actually go along, you reinforce what's happening for the other people watching. The advantages of resistance outright is that it will embolden other people and it will show them that they don't have to be bullied into this. Gray Rock will also show them you don't have to participate in a different way. In order to spy... Spies have to give a little bit away. This is espionage. So they might ask you, you know, if you've ever participated in racism? And you should say something fairly minimal. Yeah, probably. The way you guys define it, which is, you know, if I participate in a system that creates inequitable outcomes, well, I definitely support the existing system that we have. I want to continue that system. So, yeah, obviously in your in your terms, that, that's problematic. And I recognize that it's problematic. So once you give in and you say, I recognize, you see the way I worded that, by the way, I probably wasn't a very good spy. A better spy would probably actually play along a little bit. Um, you're not, you're, you're going to help the, you're going to cause some of the demoralizing of your, your colleagues. The more you play along, the more obviously you play along. But in this case, you can give away very little. I support the, I definitely support the existing system. I want to see it continue. And you guys define that as, uh, systemically racist because it produces inequitable outcomes and you recognize that as, as problematic and complicity in racism, as you say. So yeah, I recognize. But the goal of this is to go along enough to get along to where you can record as much of what's happening as possible. That might be an audio recording or a video recording or screenshots or downloading the whole program with the training program they give you. That might be creating detailed notes and diaries about how they react to various people and various responses. Somebody gray rocked. Here's what they did. Somebody resisted. This is what they did. The people who went along with it, some people started confessing. The confessions escalated. It's kind of like being Robert Lifton analyzing the thought reform environment, which is what your DEI or unconscious bias or sustainability training will be. It's a thought reform environment but not by interviewing people who went through it, but rather by putting himself through it. Like if you went and signed up for a gender studies course or whatever to see what's going on, or you voluntarily showed up to an ESG meeting to see what's going on, you're being a spy. That's the mentality. So you play along well enough to get more information so that you can document that information and then expose that information. The spy is useless if the spy doesn't expose the information. So you put together a dossier that you then hand over to journalists who are going to be likely to publish it or to characters uh, in the kind of influencer space who put these stories out or you become that influencer yourself by putting out 
uh, your whistleblowing information with social media or videos or whatever it happens to be. That, so that's the goal. If you're a spy, you're an information gatherer, you play along specifically to the purpose of gathering information and you gather as much of it as you can so that you can expose it, which you must do at the end to qualify as a spy, which is a form of fighting back. You can do a tremendous amount of damage that you would never be able to do through resistance or gray rock by spying by becoming the whistleblower, by gathering enough information, gathering enough rope to hang them. As the saying goes, you can do a ton of damage. Much of what has happened so far uh, in our advances against the woke have been possible, have gained public support, have become alarming because of whistleblowers who are in in effect taking the spiral. Much more difficult, requires a certain temperament. It's probably easier for most people than resisting, because all you have to do is go along, get along and take notes, right? Gray rock requires you to be able to go flat. Forthright resistance requires you to take a stand. I guess we could probably put these in the uh, houses of of Hogwarts um, in some way or another. But uh, the last option is troll. And this is where you're going to lean in and accelerate. This is your accelerationist strategy. Are you, would you say you participate in racism? Yes. And then you start telling a tall tale. You start telling something really crazy and you try to accelerate the whole thing to where everybody's saying really crazy stuff and the thing kind of goes off the rails. You are trolling. You are attempting to elicit responses that take the thing off the rails. You are becoming the avatar of what they want. Now, the thing is, is if the facilitator is very savvy at all, they're going to spot the troll. They are not going to be happy. Once again, like with spying, when you whistleblow, if you get found out that you whistleblow, so you didn't, you, that you blew the whistle, so that you didn't stay anonymous enough or didn't stay anonymous at all when you did it, you might get fired. You're sharing possibly proprietary information. You're bringing shame and embarrassment upon your company. Prepare for the worst. If you troll and you get found out, you're gone. I guarantee you. This is the grievance studies affair. This is writing those fake academic articles. This is doing it live though. This is taking the show on the road. This requires a very quick mind, a very thorough working knowledge of what the facilitators are likely to want to hear and being able to, in a way that becomes increasingly wild, dangerous, or humorous, feed it back to them to take the thing into absurdity or into um, calamity as it were. And it could go either way. You could troll them into saying things that the majority of the participants would recognize as horrific, or you could troll them into buying something ridiculous hook, line, and sinker. Um, So calamity or humor, uh, absurdity. And these tactics can actually work quite well. Again, if you get caught trolling, you're probably done. You prepare for the worst. So those are four strategies you can use to fight back against these ideological totalist environments, these thought reform environments that you are being subjected to in DEI training, sustainability training, SDG training, ESG training, um, whatever it happens to be. And four strategies you can take if you want to bring the fight back to them are, like I said, you can resist outright. I refuse to participate in this. You can go gray rock and just refuse in a passive way to participate. Okay. No, no. Okay. You can spy by giving them enough information to make it look like you're a willing participant, which is what you probably would do if you went along to get along anyway, but you're taking notes now with the intention to blow the whistle at the end, or you can troll and try to drive the thing either off a cliff or off of a cliff of one kind or another, either into calamity or into absurdity. Um, in which case you should still be taking notes. As a matter of fact, no matter which of these four approaches you take, you should be taking notes. But those are four strategies should you want to fight back against the DEI environment that you find yourself in or the ideological training environment, the brainwashing environment you're being put in through these ideological training programs. Again, DEI training, unconscious bias training, ESG training, SDG or sustainable development goal training, sustainability training, um, any of these kinds of things. I may have left some out. It doesn't matter. You know what they look like. You know what these things look like when you're subjected to them. Those are four strategies to fight back. Resist, play dead, or gray rock, I suppose. It's play dead. Um, Spy or troll. 
and I hope you'll fight back. I think you should think about it, and I hope you will actually fight back for strategies to do it.